It's humiliating. It's violating. What happened to Morgan Lee more than two years ago still keeps her awake at night. It didn't feel real. In 2019, she was handcuffed and shackled in this van on her way to the Forks Jail for a misdemeanor when her guard reached under her skirt and sexually assaulted her. I was at the mercy of, of him, powerless to do anything, and I think that's how he preferred it. Lee reported the assault, and early last year, she watched on Zoom. All right, so we're here for sentencing. As a Clallam County Court judge sentenced John Gray, her former jail guard, to 20 months in prison. Mr. Gray, anything you want to say to the court? He pled guilty to sexually assaulting not just Lee, but three other women who were inmates at the city of Forks Jail, while he was in charge of protecting them. I mean, that was his job, as somebody that we were supposed to be able to trust. But it's what happened before Gray's crimes in Forks, before he ever worked there, that now raises serious questions about the decisions of the people in charge of him. Because this should have never happened. For more than two decades, Gray worked here at the Clallam Bay Correction Center, an adult male prison on the Olympic Peninsula. Over his nearly 25-year career as a corrections officer, records show inmates and other prison guards made at least two dozen complaints against him. And prison brass repeatedly disciplined Gray for misconduct, including racism, vulgarity, security breaches, and sexual harassment. In our three-month investigation, we searched through thousands of pages of documents and found that despite all this, officials at nearly every level brushed aside warnings and made decisions that allowed a predator to remain on the job. The complaints about Gray started rolling in from the inmates he looked after. At least five Clallam Bay prisoners accused Gray of sexual misconduct, including a transgender man in 2015 who thought bosses were trying to cover it up. His complaint was closed without action. At least eight of Gray's own co-workers would soon report problems too. It was extremely toxic. Kimberly Seward was among them. I would call in sick because I knew that Gray was going to be there and the thought of that was hopeless. Prison records show Seward repeatedly voiced her concerns, telling bosses her co-worker harassed her and subjected her to a hostile work environment by yelling, making bigoted, sexual, and homophobic statements. And he acted like he was bulletproof, like nothing he said or did would get him in trouble, and he was pretty much right. Eventually, one of Seward's complaints led to disciplinary action. In 2017, Gray was reprimanded for making racist remarks about two co-workers. All of the horrible things you can say about a colleague. But he stayed on the job. It was like it was okay. As time went on, prison records show, Gray went on to cause more trouble. A 2018 internal prison investigation showed he used vulgarity on the job, shoved an inmate, and violated security protocol. This time, the Department of Corrections, the DOC, suspended him for 15 days. But again... Gray kept his job. At that point, why, why are you keeping a problem employee? And then, Gray attended a training meant to stop sexual abuse behind bars. According to disciplinary records, during the class, he made sexual comments and sounds, and staff members were visibly upset. That was it. The prison superintendent told Gray he was no longer qualified for his job. The state fired him for sexual harassment. I had that sense of, like, finally... The truth is out. These people can see what kind of person this is. But Gray's story doesn't end there. His union, Teamsters Local 117, fought hard on his behalf and convinced the state to sign this agreement to wipe the reprimand for racism from Gray's record, reverse his termination, and give him his job Back. It's really beneath the, the dignity of these communities. Sarah Prescott is a civil rights attorney who specializes in prison misconduct. There is no excuse in this world for having people in these facilities with so, so many flashing red lights. After returning to the Clallam Bay Prison, Gray soon resigned from his full-time job. He stayed on as an on-call guard and applied for a full-time job at the jail in Forks. And Forks knew about Gray's history. Records show the police chief personally reviewed his thick disciplinary file and then hired him. It's inconceivable that a leader could be looking at a record like this and say, that's the guy for our taxpayers. City of Forks declined to answer our questions about the hire. Over the next eight months at the Forks jail, in 2019, he went on to sexually assault Morgan Lee and at least three other women. And there was a fifth inmate, Kimberly Bender, who said she was a victim too of sexual harassment. I can tell just by looking at you that you know, this is really bothering you. During that investigation, the city got rid of Gray, 
the second time he'd been fired. But his career still wasn't over. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, why? why? After getting fired from Forks, Gray asked the DOC to give him back his full-time job. They did. And he got a raise. I was livid. Why would you take him back? You finally got rid of him. How did this happen? Internal emails and disciplinary records show it was Gray's local union, Teamsters 117, that went to bat for him, just as they'd done before. Gray's union rep convinced top prison leaders not only to rehire him, but to allow him to start fresh with no mention in performance evaluations of his troubled past. It is not unusual to see people that have really egregious files and histories be protected. I think a lot of this has to go ultimately to the people who could have stopped it. Teamsters 117 and the DOC declined to do interviews for this story. But in separate statements, they said they didn't know about Gray's misconduct in Forks when he returned to his full-time prison job. And DOC officials added they had no reason to do another background check. The month after Gray returned to his full-time job, his past in Forks caught up with him. He was arrested at work, charged and convicted of the sex crimes that forever changed Morgan Lee's life. Mr. Gray, anything you want to say to the court? And sentenced to return to prison. This time, as a prisoner. I'm very sorry. Taylor Muir, Fender Rusky, King 5 News.